Welcome to an audiobook entitled Parish Management and Operations, The Buck Stops Here, narrated by Catholic author Michael Brenda. We hope you enjoy the segment and find it useful in your ministerial work. Chapter 71. Who am I really seeking to hire? It is usually a given that as the PMO administrator, you will not be the best or most knowledgeable person at every PMO job. But note this is also true of the symphony orchestra conductor. Just because one is the leader of the band doesn't mean he or she is the best at playing or even knows how to play every instrument under their direction. The same is true for a CEO, military general, elected official, etc. You must be conversational about every PMO position, but that does not mean you must know every technical operating detail about every job. Indeed, this is not possible. As you know, this is why we sometimes split the applicant interview, so that in cases where we are not the most knowledgeable about a particular PMO position, somebody with deeper expertise in the field can assist us in selecting the right candidate, provided our interviewing assistants know our culture and the attributes of an A-player applicant. In light of the above, what then is more important and weighted more highly than prior work experience when interviewing a PMO applicant? And remember, continue to note here we are speaking about positions germane to PMO, not surgeons, police detectives, architects, etc. We are looking for two criteria from PMO applicants. Number one, a very bright, very smart applicant. And number one, an applicant who is always willing to take direction. Note that the use of one above for both points is not something that was misspoken. Each point is mandatory, and both points are equally important, so you could reorder the points if you wish and it would make no difference. One without the other is fatal to an applicant, but with these two points alone, you can create, not hire, but create an A player. Therefore, we arrive at the secret to hiring A players. You don't set out to hire an A player. You set out to hire someone you can build into an A player. You are always seeking A player potential, not necessarily ready-made A player applicants. If you actually find a ready-made A player applicant, that is just a bonus but it is not mandatory and not our primary hiring objective. When we interview an applicant, we are simply seeking the potential in the applicant to develop into an A player. You could pay a lot of MBA tuition and never pick up the above piece of real-world wisdom. Further, note that prior experience is nowhere to be found as a prerequisite criterion for PMO hiring. Again, understand we are not proposing this hiring philosophy for the chief of neurosurgery, etc., for example, but anyone who thinks there is a position and job description akin to the chief of neurosurgery on the PMO org chart should reconsider their thinking. The science of PMO is just not that complicated. Job complexity is not to blame for mediocrity. Mediocrity in PMO does not exist because PMO jobs are complex. Mediocrity or worse in PMO exists because of all the reasons and ways to fail in PMO that you have heard about up to this point. Prior work experience is not a highly weighted PMO hiring criterion. As mentioned above, It is either neutral at best and usually a detriment. Again, what we are looking for in an A-player applicant is, number one, a very bright, very smart applicant, and number one, an applicant who is always willing to take direction. In relation to prior experience and PMO hiring, how many academic degree letters one has after his or her name? including the fact some applicants may not have any academic degree letters after their name at all. 
is not a disqualifier for any PMO position. Oh my, how many job opening advertisements I have read that ridiculously and without merit require a four-year degree when the job does not require any degree whatsoever, much less a four-year degree. On top of this, when you additionally demand prior experience in your job posting, shazam! All parties to this decision quite naturally assume there must be a reason the employer demanded prior experience, and obviously that reason is they want me to apply my prior experience on the job. Uh, no. In PMO, bringing hiring prior experience is either neutrally weighted as neither bad nor good, or it becomes the landmine applicants step on to disqualify themselves from hiring consideration. How so? <clears throat> the art of conducting the interview is to, at various points, give applicants some figurative rope and see what they do with it. How so? Ask the applicant to explain the value of his or her prior experience to your needs in PMO, and then immediately stop talking. Make the simple statement. Tell me how your prior experience relates to this job you are interviewing for. At this point, say nothing more. Do not overrun yourself and continue talking by putting words on a table for the applicant to repeat back to you, such as, Tell me how your prior experience relates to this job you are interviewing for. I mean, how do you think your prior experience as an office manager will help you here? You do not want to give any indication to the applicant as to what form or direction you want the answer to take. No hint whatsoever as to the answer you are seeking, because there is a correct answer and a wrong answer. When the applicant quite innocently and indeed quite naturally, based on the wording of your job post, assumes you want to hear X number of years of prior ex office manager experience will enhance their PMO chances to be hired, fine. But the wise applicant will either preface or end comments with, but what's most important is that I do this job the way you want it done, not the way I do the job for my current or last employer. Guess what? You will rarely find applicants with the wisdom to subjugate the perceived value of their years of prior experience to the more open-minded A-player defining characteristic that you will be teaching them how you want the job done and not vice versa. So, given the above insights, why would you even value, much less hire at a premium, someone strongly peddling prior experience to you. As busy as you will be, you need to understand the last thing you want to do is unwind the ways of the person you just hired goes about his or her job before you can even begin to teach this person to accept the ways you want the job done in your culture. This point gets to the heart of the matter. Why would anyone pay a premium for something they do not want, cannot use, and that is ultimately detrimental to their organizational culture. Why do you want to pay a premium for prior experience when in fact the first thing you are going to do with all new hires is instruct them to subjugate all those years of prior experience to the PMO culture you have worked so hard to create, a culture that values two other propositions over prior experience. Number one, are you really smart? Number one, are you always willing to take direction? Can you be trained to do things in our culture precisely how I want them done? Or do I have to deal with your pushback every step of the way? While it is theoretically possible to teach your culture while simultaneously asking them to divorce themselves from applying their prior experience, this request borders on a pipe dream in the real world. It is far easier for you to request this subjugation of prior experience than it is for the person to actually subjugate it. Notwithstanding his or her comments to the contrary, do you really think an applicant steeped for years in a particular way of thinking, animated for years by a particular culture with little to nothing in common with your culture, 
is your best hiring option as opposed to working with a far more malleable, indeed blank, prior experience canvas? The choice is yours, but in my experience, prior experience applicants are train wrecks waiting to happen. Folks just looking for a place to draw their next paycheck, essentially in the same manner as they have done so in their life to date. I don't need to hire such people. I don't want to hire such people. Instead, I very much prefer the more cooperative and malleable canvas, someone who interviews as the epitome of the above two points, because that is someone I can build into an A player. Note the science of asking an applicant the right questions is easy to do well. Make a list, work from memory, whatever. The science of forming questions to ask on an applicant's technical competency and proficiency is the check-a-box easy part of the interview process. The primary reason people chronically fail at hiring is that they over-focus on an applicant's technical competency and not enough focus is placed on discovering the two aforementioned key factors that reveal A player potential. Number one, are you really smart? And number one, are you always willing to take direction? Chapter 72. Let me tell you what you want to hear. If, and this is a big if, if you can find an applicant who is really smart, and is always willing to take direction, and has prior experience? Of course this applicant is a superior candidate over the really smart person who is willing to take direction but has little to no prior experience. However, here's life in the real world. I have very rarely found applicants with genuine years of prior experience who are always willing to subjugate their ego and fit into the culture I am either trying to create or have already created. It is not impossible, but it is very rare. <clears throat> the above point is paramount and falls under the old but true expression, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Now, should you directly approach an applicant you would like to hire about your concerns that they might not be willing to take direction? Of course, but your problem is not expressing your concerns on this point to the applicant. Your problem is receiving an answer from the applicant that you can trust. Why? Because any bright applicant will now detect that you are concerned her prior experience might inhibit her from learning your ways of operating and accepting your culture. Applicant's mental side note for next job interview here. Determine if the interviewer values prior experience before overselling him or her on such experience. Such an applicant would also naturally be confused as to why you would require experience in your job opening posting and then proceed not to highly value it. Therefore, the applicant will logically follow your open invitation to lean on her prior experience to get the job right up until the point she realizes, uh, maybe that wasn't such a good idea, because that does not seem to be the two prize characteristics this interviewer is looking for. In this sense, if your job post specifically requested prior experience, you have greased the skids, as it were, to fail the interview. You invited the applicant to fail by inferring she lean on prior experience that you should have never requested or at least exalted, in the first place. As such, what happens next is totally predictable. The applicant is going to say what she thinks the interviewer wants to hear about her prior experience, instead of telling you what you need to hear. At this point, the interviewer is left to make a subjective judgment as to whether or not the applicant is sincere, and to a large degree this depends on what she said. In other words, what she did with the rope in answer to your prompt, tell me how your prior experience relates to this job you are interviewing for. <clears throat> how difficult did the answer to this question make it for the applicant to persuade you she is now oh so willing to always take direction within your culture 
when a minute ago she just told you that her prior job experience is paramount and precisely what you need here. Did the applicant already step on a landmine when first answering this question, portraying herself as always having all the answers? Did she tell you in full and glorious detail how, I will really take charge of your office, I am a take charge person. I have 22 years of office manager experience. You don't have to worry about the office anymore with me in charge. And now the applicant realizes the air and backpedals from these previous remarks. Uh, no. Next applicant, please. All of this brings us here. When trying to build your new culture in PMO, why bother interviewing this heavily steeped prior experience applicant profile at all? If you place a job opening notification that emphasizes seeking highly intelligent person willing to take direction to fill whatever open position you have, notice how you immediately minimize the applicant pool that is going to attempt to shape your culture and tell you how the job should be done in return for a much larger applicant pool of people you can truly shape and mold into your culture and teach them under what culture you want all jobs done? All you need to do at this point is to verify the applicant is very bright and truly willing to take direction. I can assure you that these two tasks are much easier to detect, less time-consuming to train, and ultimately more likely to succeed as A players than trying to unwind the tendencies of someone with a closed mind, brain soaked by years of prior experience mental obstacles, and then attempt to backfill your culture into such a hard-headed vessel. So what's the catch in all this? There is only one drawback to this interviewing and hiring philosophy. The initial burden of doing the job is first shifted to the person who will train your newly hired, really bright person who is willing to take direction. In other words, you have to fulfill your end of the bargain and provide the necessary and requisite job training and culture direction to the newly hired employee. You cannot shun prior experience in applicants and then unleash them on the job without any training. However, does this sound like too much work to you? If so, look at it this way. There is no free lunch option. One way or another, there is work to do and challenges to overcome in hiring and culture building. But I can assure you, in relation to hiring someone with prior experience, and spending countless hours subsequently unwinding what he or she knows in order to just bring them to culture ground zero level. And you can't really get to culture ground zero with such folks most of the time anyway. Then rebuilding him or her with the knowledge of how you want the job done in your culture, that is a far more time intensive and ultimately not worth it proposition because it usually does not succeed. Instead, hire a smart person who is always willing to take direction, accept the training burden, and proceed to build a superior PMO A player. Here we must stress there is no free lunch to building up any organization, but all PMO administrators have this option. Commit to investing time at the front end of the building process to hire, train, and develop each new employee in the ways of your culture and the ways of how you want each job done. Knowing this will ultimately build a lasting and superior PMO organization on a foundation of A players or Defer to finding and hiring the vastly self-overrated applicant who claims to have all the prior experience you will need. Skip the new hire training because, after all, you are paying a premium for prior experience. So why does this person need training and subsequently live under a mishmash of mismatched individual PMO cultures animated by disparate employee attitudes and methods of doing their job by whatever culture 
so-called contribution each person chooses to make for themselves. How does that sound to you? Choosing this latter option will inevitably and permanently result in mediocrity or worse PMO, yet many do so. This is the PMO organizational equip equivalent of a symphony orchestra operating with as many different conductors as there are musical instruments all at the same time. Such an orchestra can perpetually produce noise, but nothing resembling beautiful philharmonic music. This is the essence of broken PMO. We hope you enjoyed the program, and will join us back for another show on WCAT Radio. This is Sebastian Mafud. Good day.